God hears prayers. This one's about, you know, uh, very common about children. What do I do about my children? I raise them in the faith. We're a Catholic family. But, you know, they're, they're not practicing the faith. And I pray for them. What else can I do? Give good example. Love them. You, it's frustrating at times, I know. Be patient. You know, it's God's time, not our time. Um, <laughs> a tough old Italian lady came to me last year at a mission. And she said, Father, I got a son. He don't got no brain. <laughs> I've been telling him for years. <clears throat> yeah, he don't get it. He keeps doing stupid things. Over and over and over. I pray and I pray and I pray. What can I do? So keep praying, pray the rosary every day. Is there anything else I can do? I said, well, there's a special prayer for the testaduras of the world. <laughs> you know, the people like me. You know, the chuchas, the jackasses, the ones who just don't get it. You know, stubborn, hard-headed, tough. Excuse my expression in church, but it's called, I call it, you'll never hear this from anyone else, much less any other priest. The butt kicking prayer. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. I first became familiar with it when uh, years ago a woman at a mission came to me and said, Oh, Father, please talk to my son. Uh, he's in trouble, you know, I think he's, I know he's drinking, he might be doing drugs, he's running around with the wrong crowd, please talk to me. I said, well, does the kid want to talk to me? Nope. <laughs> but please talk to him anywhere. And so the next day she brought him to the rectory by the ear, about 16 years old. Wise guy. Brings him in, it's like she dumps him, you know, she, the, the door to the living room at the rectory opened, boom, pushes them in there and she's out of there. And there I am, I'm, I'm left with this beast in the living room. You talk about badly disposed. So I was on my best behavior. So I said, son, how can I help you? You can't help me. Well, young man, what can I do for you? You can't do anything for me. And it went downhill from there. He was the meanest, most obnoxious, wise guy. Believe me, he had a face you want to hit. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Oh, and I don't encourage that, you know? Uh-uh. But he was, a, he was a special, you know, where you talk about, oh, wise guy, you want to just hit him one. Finally, I said, okay. You know, I realized, you know, you know what you're up against there. And finally, I said, okay, okay. You know, I'll just pray for you. And he's mocked, you know, he scoffed. Ha! You'll pray for me? You'll pray for me? What are you going to pray for? And he, now he was really getting me aggravated. So. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to pray God kicks your... And that got his attention, you know. He didn't ever heard that from a priest before. Get out of here. Well, I prayed for him. Knelt down, gave him to the Blessed Mother, all the angels, all the saints. <laughs> oh, Lord, kick his butt. <laughs> oh, Lord, in your great mercy, beat him up. A week went by, mom called me, distressed. Father, a terrible thing has happened to my son. He's been in a terrible car wreck. He's got broken arms and broken legs. He's in traction, this, that, the other thing. I remember thinking the profound theological thought, yes. <laughs> And who said God don't hear prayers? 
And she said, would you please go visit him? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I did. I went into the ICU of the hospital, and there was the kid. His arms and legs in traction, head wrapped up. He looked like the mummy. His little eyes poking out of the bandages, and I came down to the foot of the bed, and I just smiled at him. He knew. He knew. He laid in that bed, helpless, for a long time. He had a long time to think about his miserable attitude, about his rebelliousness, about his drinking and drugging and whatever else he was doing. And he became, long story short, he became a very fine young man. That's the butt kicking prayer. My old Uncle Tony used to say, some people, you got to hit them right between the eyes with a two by four, just to get their attention. That was me. That was me, hard headed. You know, and, and listen, God doesn't want to hurt anybody. Don't get me wrong. God, God does not want to harm anyone. And we shouldn't either. I certainly don't. But I know human nature. And sometimes the arrogance is so deep, you got to. And I don't mean this physically. You got to let God slap them. In plain English, I'm sorry. You know that may be too harsh for some people to swallow. You know, uh, it's not very palatable. But take my word for it. It's real. And don't you think for a minute. You know, God's a better parent than many of us are. Okay. And God does not subscribe to that school of parenting that would make spanking illegal. Oh, he'll kick your butt. <laughs> he will do it. He will do it. And he did it to that little teenage boy, and he's done it. He did it to me. Now, I don't wish it on anybody. I really don't, except that I wish them to be healed. I wish them to get straightened out. And sometimes, with some of us, the only way to do it is the hard way. They will not do You try to negotiate with little Joey. You try to negotiate with that wise guy, and he will spit in your face. You think, you know, try to negotiate with a terrorist? Well, that there is a terrorist, a teenage terrorist, and you're not getting anywhere with him trying to negotiate with him. And so I'm not suggesting you beat him up. I'm saying just give him to God. But don't be surprised if God beats him up. He may well, and don't get scared. Oh, my poor little daughter, my poor little son. Don't get scared. Praise the Lord. There's a reason for a lot of that kind of stuff. Hey, if I didn't, oh, I could have been dead so many times. I could tell you story after story of my miserable life. I mean, I should have been killed in gunfights. I could have been in prison for drug stuff. I mean, you, oh, when I think about it, I could have been dead a hundred times over. Of course, my mother was praying for me and my grandmother and all my pious aunts and so forth. They're all praying, and I believe the prayers protected me. But then in due time, finally, enough is enough. God reached down, grabbed me by the scruff of the neck, and shook me hard. Shook me real hard. Finally woke me up. It took several years of incredible punishment. Homeless in the streets. I mean, I don't know if you really know what that means. Uh, it, it, unbelievably harsh existence. Drugs. Waking up in places early in the morning and you don't have a clue where you are and what you've done. Horrible. Horrible. I've, people say to me, you know, I talk about spiritual warfare a lot. The devil. So Sometimes people scoff and say, Pah, devil. You ever seen them? Multiple times. Multiple times. In many different ways. Ordinary and extraordinary. 
You can't tell me the devil doesn't exist. I know that doctrinally because it's a part of our faith. You cannot be Catholic and disbelieve in the existence and activity of Satan and the fallen angels. Now, I have taught and written on that extensively and continue to do a lot more. I'm writing a book right now. It has a very simple title, Combat. Combat. A field manual for 21st century spiritual warfare. And I'll tell you what. You don't believe in that stuff? You should have been with me on dozens of occasions, and you'd believe. I guarantee you, you would believe. I'll tell you a very interesting fact. I know any number of theologians and priests and wise guys, pseudo-educated lay people who think they're sophisticated in the faith, who don't believe in the devil. I've met a lot of them. But I've never met a single drug addict or prostitute out in the street who didn't believe. And that's an interesting commentary right there. See, they come in contact with the enemy all the time. The enemy owns them. And they feel that. They experience that. So, we are at war. And we've got to treat it like a real war. Because it is a real war. So get ready to fight the good fight. 